It's good to see you back here once again for another edition of Forecast Lab. It's a small crowd on our channel, but here we take a more in-depth look at what's happening in the atmosphere. Three weeks away from the summer solstice, and we're looking at a heat wave building on the west coast for next week. Let's take a look at the surface analysis for this afternoon. We've got a polar high sinking across the Great Lakes area, the East Coast region, bringing some cooler temperatures, 60s and 70s, to the northeastern U.S. Tropical air continues to dominate the south-central U.S. And we've got this other polar front boundary from Nebraska to Colorado and back to Nevada. Let's take a look at the upper air pattern. At 250 millibars, about 34,000 feet, we are seeing troughing in the northern plains. Polar front jet from the northern Rockies into the Dakotas, and we pick up a 100-knot jet segment across Minnesota. Subtropical jet down in northwest Mexico and west Texas, helping to support some thunderstorm activity developing this afternoon there. And on the northeast coast, some very strong northerly flow, 80 to 90 knots coming out of Quebec into New England, down into New York City. And that's associated with a region of cold air advection coming out of eastern Canada. And I'll just take you through the forecast sequence so you can see what's coming. The big change is going to come from California, Arizona, and Nevada as the subtropical ridge starts building in. There it is. Weekend flow strongly anticyclonic and as we get into monday tuesday and wednesday we've got a closed high on the central california coast there so this is going to be associated with very warm temperatures in that part of the country meanwhile very strong jet up to the north 140 knots out of the gulf of alaska into the northwest u.s so by the time we get up to late Tuesday, big high across Nevada and some of that extending into Texas, Oklahoma, and Kansas. As we get into early summer, a good way to assess pattern changes is with the 700 millibar chart. This is up at about 10,000 feet, looking at the mid-troposphere. So what we see here is a large bubble of very warm air. I've got the 10 Celsius line shaded, that's about 50 Fahrenheit. The darker shade is gonna be 14 Celsius, that's about, about 57 Fahrenheit, which is very warm at that level. And just going quickly through the weekend and into early next week, you can see that heat dome expanding across the Southern Plains. So warmer temperatures across Texas, Oklahoma, and Kansas, that's going to shut down some of the thunderstorm activity give us more of a fair sky, early summer weather pattern, and really heat things up. And as we go into Tuesday and Wednesday, yet pretty much expanding everywhere across the southwestern U.S. and the southern plains. Let's take a look at the weather around the country. In the northeastern U.S., cold Canadian air spreading across the northeastern states. Highs in the 70s this afternoon. Overnight lows expected to be in the 40s and 50s, as low as 46 at State College, Pennsylvania. A big warm-up over the weekend. The Weather Service issued a warning this weekend for Maine along the coast. It's going to be very warm there up into the 70s tomorrow. People are going to head down to the beaches and get into some of that cold water. The water temperature is running about 52 which presents a risk for hypothermia for people swimming out into the ocean there. So that's something you have to really watch for this time of year. Anyway, a couple of different patterns we can see on the map. Area of cold air advection as the cold air spreads over warmer terrain and we get some of that convective instability. We've also got the ridging, fair skies, very little cloud cover. And then further to the west, we get closer to the upper level trough. We start picking up the cirrus, the mid-level clouds, and the tropical moisture. And for the southeastern U.S., cold air is sinking south there as well. Temperatures in the 50s for tonight in the Carolinas, down to 55 at Charlotte. Small craft advisories along the coast near Miami, up towards 
uh, West Palm Beach, Port St. Lucie, due to strong easterly flow. And we've also got small craft advisories as well from Cedar Key to Panama City and out to Miramar Beach in northwest Florida. However, a large convective mass moving into the lower Mississippi River region out from Texas there. Storm Prediction Center monitoring this area of tropical moisture in central Mississippi. We've seen a few low-end supercells in a marginally sheared environment there. At this time, however, nothing going on. I don't see any tornado warnings or severe warnings, but quite a bit of thunderstorm activity and some of it producing some strong outflow, like right there. We can check the correlation coefficient sometimes to get a better look at those boundaries, and spectrum width works as well. And you can see this line extending out from the radar there at Jackson. What's causing that? Well, there's the Jackson radar that's been operational since 2004, but we go a little bit to the southwest, and we have a water tower that was installed in 2020, blocking the radar beam partially. So I don't know what the story is on that, but it seems like a little coordination would have solved that. Anyway, the Weather Prediction Center has a slight risk of excessive rainfall for the remainder of today into tonight from Gulfport, New Orleans, westward into Louisiana. Moving into Texas, an extremely active month and Yesterday was the case also. We go back to yesterday morning, early development of MCSs. Those moved southeast into Dallas, into Abilene, down to Waco. And we got several lines. This one moved through during the afternoon. Another line moving through during the evening overnight. And down into Houston early this morning. And that brings us up to the current time. Texas finally clearing out. The atmosphere overturned in this area right there but some storms trying to go up once again around Sweetwater, Ballinger, and just northeast of San Angelo. Also storms going up on the Davis Mountains, the Serrano del Burros, and the Sacramento Mountains, the Sangre de Cristos, out there in New Mexico. There's the current radar showing storm development in the big country. These cells here around Sweetwater, they're not really developing because the air is very dry. Dew points around 60 degrees Fahrenheit. Here, the air mass is a little bit more moist, dew points around 65 to 67, supporting some modest storm development between Ballinger and Coleman. And the stuff in the Davis Mountains, that's out of range of the Dias radar, but certainly going up, we can see that on the satellite imagery. And there it is, development around Sweetwater, around Ballinger, and out there around Sanderson. And the air mass out here around Sanderson, a little bit more moist, dew points around 65 to 70. So there could be quite a bit of storm activity going into tonight. This stuff here, the high resolution rapid refresh, seems to be indicating a supercell tracking south, southeast. So there could be some weather hazards right here in this very moist air west of the Rio Grande. In the northern plains, we've got a separate frontal boundary. You can kind of see it right there from Minnesota into Nebraska. We're going to be seeing increasing hazards for thunderstorm development in southern Minnesota all the way down towards the Sioux City, Iowa area. Those will be tracking to the northeast and to western Wisconsin tonight. And with that very rich moisture, precipitable water up to 1.5 inches and training, there could be 1 to 3 inches of rain across this entire area. In the southwestern U.S., we are turning up the heat for today, the hottest day of the week. Phoenix expecting to get up to 105, 100 at Tucson, and even in the San Joaquin Valley, looking for temperatures approaching 100. At this hour, we've got 101 at Phoenix and 98 at Las Vegas, and we're up to about 92 degrees at Bakersfield, with 90 at Sacramento. And the northwestern U.S. looking pretty good this afternoon, but they are going to get into a progressively more active weather pattern through the weekend and much of next week. We'll cover that shortly.
So there it is, your region by region. We head back to the surface map and head out into the Pacific. There's our Pacific High offshore. We're going to see a lot more of that over the next couple months. Very active weather pattern in the Gulf of Alaska, 991 millibar low, with a occluded front affecting southeastern Alaska. Cloudy conditions with rain across that part of the state. Cool conditions in the interior of Alaska, temperatures in the 50s. No advisories, warnings, or anything like that in Alaska itself, but we do have marine advisories out in the Gulf of Alaska, the northern Bering Sea, and the east Siberian Sea as well. In Canada, looking pretty good for this afternoon, we do have freezing rain advisories in the western Hudson Bay region. You can see that strong area of warm air advection off of Hudson Bay into the coastal regions. Temperatures there running about 30 to 36. Those freezing rain hazards will continue into tonight for Rankin Inlet, Well Cove, and Chesterfield Inlet. And then heading down into the populated areas of Canada, we do have frost advisories from northern New Brunswick into the St. Lawrence region. Temperatures could be down to 28 degrees from Drummond and Charlotte up to Ramouski and Port Cartier. Okay, let's take a look at our forecast going into tonight. Large cluster of thunderstorms moving across Mississippi and Alabama overnight. A lot of rain potential in that part of the country. Meanwhile, in the high plains, we set up for another round of severe weather from Colorado down towards Texas and the Panhandles. The best chance of severe weather is going to be towards evening around sunset in southwestern Nebraska, far northeastern Colorado. There could be just enough backing of the low-level flow with the increase in low-level jet energy to support curved hodographs and the possibility for a few supercells. The main risk, however, will be straight-line winds and hail. And for the western U.S., warming up once again for Saturday. Temperatures will be up to 103 at Phoenix, 101 at Vegas, and up to 95 at Fresno. Then going into Sunday, Severe weather chances move up to the northern plains, mostly Minnesota and the Dakotas ahead of this frontal system. Strong downslope flow bringing those temperatures up to 90 degrees around Goodland and Pueblo. Then we go into Monday. There's the weather map early in the afternoon. Continued hot on the high plains up to 90 degrees at Denver and 84 at Rapid City. Very high precipitable water remains in the Gulf Coast area, so wherever we have a frontal boundary, there's going to be the chance for precipitation. Then going into Tuesday, cold front moving through the northern plains. Heat wave continues in the southern high plains for Tuesday, up to 101 at Amarillo, 102 at Lubbock, and 103 at Midland. Also a very warm day in the northeastern U.S. on Tuesday, looking for 85 at Albany and 84 at Buffalo. Then for Wednesday, cold front moving through the Great Lakes area, heating up in California as that subtropical ridge builds in. We're going to be seeing 102 at Sacramento, 103 at Fresno, and 94 at Reno. I really hate seeing that as that will eat into the vegetation moisture, and that moisture is really needed to help curb the wildfire danger over the summer. Here's the remainder of the sequence. Some boundaries through the southern plains, so maybe some enhanced precipitation potential in Oklahoma and Kansas. Remains quite active in the western U.S., so that'll probably make a dent in the heat. And that's going to be the last frame that I have. Looks wet in parts of the central and southern plains. And there is a lot of work going on right now with the next digital atmosphere version. Here's a preliminary look at it. It is being called tentatively Digital Atmosphere 64 because it is a 64-bit app and hopefully we'll be compiling this for Linux and maybe the Mac as well. So I don't have much more than that at this time, but when it gets done, it gets done. And I know there's some of you out there waiting for this next release. All right, this is going to be it for this edition of Forecast Lab. I hope you all have a great weekend. Thank you for supporting the program, and we'll see you back here Monday for the supporters and Wednesday for everybody else.
Take care and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you.